Hello and welcome to Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning and I'm on the Devil's Golf Course, the floor of Death Valley National Park. Around me is the salt pan of the Badwater Basin, the lowest point in North America. I am over 280 feet below sea level here. Death Valley is an enormous valley more than 120 miles long north to south and as much as 20 miles wide in places. This enormous valley was formed by major tectonic faults that line both sides of the valley and run for hundreds of miles north to south. This part of the North American continental crust is stretching apart, it is being extended. And that allows for large mountain ranges like the Panamint Range behind me to rise up and valleys to form between them to drop down. The mountain range behind me is more than 11,000 feet high and the mud and sediments below my feet are more than 10,000 feet deep. So Death Valley itself has seen more than 22,000 feet of total vertical separation in its history. However, the major faults that allowed the valley to form also move laterally. Parts of the Panamint mountain range behind me have moved as much as 60 miles north from their original position relative to the Black Mountains on the other side of the valley. But why is there so much salt here in the floor of Death Valley? Well, it's because this is a closed basin. All of the sediment and dissolved minerals that wash off of the mountains and the rain and groundwater seeping in from the surrounding region cannot escape from this valley. That means the water here just evaporates over time and leaves behind these huge mineral deposits of salt, of gypsum, of calcite, and all sorts of other waterborne minerals. A huge amount of the salt here was left behind after a large lake called Lake Manly filled the valley and then dried up. This has happened several times. A large lake existed about 120,000 years ago, and another large lake existed between about 20 and 30,000 years ago. These lakes were as much as 600 feet deep at their greatest extent, and the amount of dissolved minerals in that amount of water left behind huge deposits of salt here in the lowest part of the valley. This part of the salt pan is covered in rock salt towers. This part is called the Devil's Golf Course because it is deceptively smooth from a distance, and once you get up close to it, it is actually extremely rough. These pinnacles are made of solid rock salt with a little bit of mud mixed in. It is literally as hard as any other rock, and it makes for very difficult and slow travel across the salt pan. In places where the salt is flatter, you will occasionally have brine pools. The salty areas will occasionally dissolve and leave an opening to the groundwater table, which is only about a foot below the surface here. This allows you to see the clear, uh, ultra-saturated water that underlies the sediments of Death Valley. I'm here at one of the brine pools that are occasionally found on the Devil's Golf Course. Uh, because this salt pan is made of entirely salt, occasionally parts of it will dissolve and act as sinkholes, revealing a window into the very shallow water table here. The groundwater beneath the salt flat is hypersaline, which means it actually contains more salt uh, in it than you could get by just pouring salt into clear water. There is so much dissolved salt in this water that crystals are forming on the surface and floating on the surface tension of the water. This one is uh, very blue because of the presence of the dissolved minerals in it. Uh, it's also pretty shallow. Uh, I saw another one near here that is uh, considerably larger and deeper, uh, but it's also orange, and that's probably because of the presence of extremophile bacteria living in this extreme environment of water. In the summer, uh, this water temperature will definitely be above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is an extreme environment by any measure. This has been Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning. Thank you for watching.